Sony PlayStation held its July 2021 State of Play livestream. Death Stranding Director's Cut and Arcane Studios and Bethesda's Deathloop was generally pushed as the big games to look out for, amongst other indie and third-party titles. Sony had preemptively told fans to keep their expectations in check by confirming games like Santa Monica Studios' God of War Ragnarok and Guerrilla Games' Horizon Forbidden West would be absent. Considering Horizon Forbidden West got its own dedicated State of Play event not long ago, it's possible the God of War sequel will receive one as well down the line. But PlayStation confirmed they will have more updates for the games and also the next-gen PSVR in a few weeks. So, looking forward to that, here's everything that appeared at the July 2021 State of Play. The show starts with the reveal of the sequel for Moss, the PlayStation VR game. Polyarch's Moss is a VR puzzle adventure game released in 2018 that caught many people's attentions, thanks to its adorable protagonist, Quill, and storybook world. The newly revealed sequel, Moss Book 2, led off Sony's State of Play event. Book 2 promises to continue Quill's story as she explores the hexed castle of the Arcane, and aims to stop a tyrannical ruler who wants to unmake the world, according to a Polyarch press release. The trailer shows her taking to various environments and collecting new items to aid in this quest, including a large hammer. I am interested in this game, and it is one of the games to play if you like Sackboy and Astro. Early details about Moss Book 2's gameplay are scant for the time being. The sequel is confirmed to feature new puzzles, challenging terrain, and plenty of rich detail to make Moss more immersive than ever before. Polyarch describes the experience as having raised the stakes compared to the first game. VR players of the original Moss should immediately recognize some improvements to the experience just through the brief glimpses of gameplay shown in the trailer. There's a clearer focus on a more cinematic presentation, as well as a generally more polished presentation. Polyarch is evidently improving through experience. The original Moss was released on PC, PS4, and Oculus Quest. Moss Book 2 will likely be made available across VR supporting platforms as well. It'd be especially nice if Moss Book 2 was associated with PlayStation's PSVR 2 headset for the PS5, but news in that direction will have to wait for another time. Up next we got Arcadageddon. Developer Ilphonic is best known for its asymmetrical titles based on existing horror properties, including Friday the 13th, The Game and Predator, Hunting Grounds. Its next game, a flashy multiplayer shooter named Arcadageddon, is billed as a brand new IP. It features alien-looking characters battling solo or in co-op to take on hordes of enemies in a futuristic world with a 90s punk rock influence, and looks stylistically similar to VLAN Studios' Knockout City. The game is available in early access starting today. Ilphonic head of creative and design Jared Jarrettson has since shared more information about Arcadageddon and what inspired the team to move forward with it. Arcadageddon's origin is reportedly the effort of Jarrettson and Ilphonic to share their version of escapism, citing the pandemic as a growing inspiration for Arcadageddon to provide fans with entertainment. Jarrettson shares that the Muppets, Gorillas, and 90s punk rock are influences that have inspired the tone and art style of Arcadageddon. Its story is about fans of small-time arcade communities wanting to help keep local arcade businesses afloat, as Gilly's Arcade gets hacked by a megacorporation known as Fun Fun Company. Arcadageddon's co-op shooter gameplay is a combination of PvE and PvP, with horde enemies appearing in numerous types. Arcadageddon is playable in either single-player or co-op with up to three others. The game is structured around a loot system with hidden chests and minigames that players may seek out from of the nine gangs in Gilly's Arcade. Street cred is teased as an incentive for accomplishing tasks for gangs, as well as earning unique skin cosmetics which identify players as part of each gang. Arcadageddon is currently in early access for $19.99, and fans who have experienced Arcadageddon already are sharing their thoughts. Fans who have seen the announcement trailer have been quick to compare Arcadageddon's visual style and gameplay to games such as Destruction All-Stars, Knockout City, and Fortnite. Jarrettson states that more content will be added to Arcadageddon on a gradual basis through update patches up to the game's release. Arcadageddon's early access currently contains three unique biome maps. But Jarrettson explains that Ilphonic plans to have at least five maps available in early access before launch. 
After that we moved into the tribes of Midgard. One of the most exciting games of the event is the unique action survival RPG Tribes of Midgard. A new trailer revealing developer Norsefell's plans for Tribes of Midgard's post-launch content plans was shared during the state of play, with a focus on its first season, The Wolf Saga. Needless to say, Norsefell has big plans for Tribes of Midgard's future. Tribes of Midgard is a 10-player co-op RPG with classes progression, armor and weapons, procedurally generated worlds, and lots of enemies and challenges to discover. In other words, it's ripe for further content infusions across the board, not unlike if Diablo 3's seasonal structure met the binding of Isaac's post-launch support. That's what Tribes of Midgard's seasonal content structure will be for. In the trailer announcing the Wolf Saga season of Tribes of Midgard, Norsefell breaks down what kind of content will be available at launch. Players will have access to eight different classes, two of which are unlocked immediately. Those eight classes each have a single skill tree. Norsefell says classes will expand in future updates. Additionally, each season will add power augmenting runes, exclusive loot, boss fights, quests, and even adorable companions that can't be earned in future seasons. What isn't made clear is where the base game of Tribes of Midgard ends and where the Wolf Saga begins. In other words, it isn't clear how much content players should expect from a season, versus what's includes as part of the base game with the Wolf Saga branded on top of it. Norsefell has pointed to a new boss, new gear, the rune system, and level rewards as core season 1 content, but without more information, it's difficult to judge what Norsefell is doing just yet. A big part of the issue is that live service games are not easy to make. If Tribes of Midgard is trying to be a live service game, creating clear expectations with players and then delivering on those expectations is paramount. That's how players know their time and money is well spent. The full first season, The Wolf Saga, will last from launch through November with a mid-season update. That's a long time before players know exactly what a full season's content will be. Norsefell will have its opportunity to start strong when it launches later this month. Regardless of its seasonal content plans, Norsefell will have to prove that Tribes of Midgard is an exciting experience on its own first. The unique combination of ideas is certainly intriguing. Hopefully, it makes for a great game too. Seasonal content will be icing on the cake at that point. Up next we have an interesting one that I am really looking forward to. One of the biggest surprises in this show was a new look at a PS5 title known as Fist, forged in Shadow Torch, which casts players as a retired soldier bunny that wields a gigantic robotic hand as a weapon. This rabbit's name is Rayton, and the premise of the game will see him embark on a quest to save his closest friend. A new release date trailer revealed during Sony's livestream sets up what happens next, as Rayton ventures to Torch City and battles the location's oppressive rulers, the Legion. Fist's website describes the game as a dieselpunk metroidvania, and the footage makes abundantly clear how it fits such a unique description. Framed from a 2D perspective, the footage shows Rayton using an array of retrofuturistic contraptions to navigate his way across Torch City, relying on propellers, drills, and his titular mechanical fist, which he uses to brutalize enemies. It seems combat will rely heavily on this tool, as the protagonist uses the giant weapon to knock his opponents around, chaining strikes together with other tools in his arsenal. It seems the game will also feature a range of boss battles, with one section of the clip showing Rayton come face to face with a flying mech and another seeing him battle a mechanical worm while underwater. The game's protagonist won't be the only character to show up, with the trailer and website also teasing some of Torch City's other inhabitants. There's Morpheus the Buffalo, who's a former commander of a resistance army, Duke the Rat, who runs the Rat Mafia, and Lady Q the Cat, who's seen effortlessly dispatching several soldiers during the trailer. Fist Forged in Shadow Torch is slated to launch later this year, with the trailer confirming it'll hit PC, PlayStation 4, and PlayStation 5 on September 7, 2021. It will join several notable PlayStation games also launching in September, including Deathloop and Death Stranding Director's Cut, which were both showcased during the State of Play event. Next up we have a multiplayer game, Hunter's Arena Legends. Developed and published by Mantisco, Hunter's Arena Legends 
is a 30-player battle royale game focused around martial arts and swordplay as Hunters and Demons Clash described as fighting game meets battle royale. However, the thing that stands out most about this trailer is it confirmed Hunters Arena Legends will be a free PS Plus game for August 2021, available between August 3rd and September 6th. As for what Hunters Arena Legends is, it's a melee-focused battle royale game that offers solo and trios options. Hunters Arena, Legends players have to fight off not only other players like other battle royale games, but computer-controlled demons as well. This makes it a PvPvE experience that should offer a unique twist on the standard battle royale formula. Those on PlayStation may have already had the chance to try out Hunter's Arena Legends for themselves. A Hunter's Arena Legends beta has taken place exclusively on PlayStation platforms, so it definitely seems that the game is closely tied to the PlayStation brand. Now that it's coming to PlayStation Plus though, many more PlayStation gamers across PS4 and PS5 will get to see exactly what Hunter's Arena, Legends is all about and what it's offering fans of the battle royale genre. In the meantime, it's interesting to note that the free PS Plus games on PS5 have mostly stuck to a certain theme. Almost all of them have been brand new game releases, with one of the only exceptions being when Maneater was a free PS Plus game. It will be interesting to see how long Sony sticks with this pattern, especially with the PS5's one-year anniversary coming up in a few months. Up next we have one of my most anticipated games this year, but unfortunately it got pushed back to 2022. Sifu is one such project, though the action-packed trailer revealed during the July State of Play presentation did include some unfortunate news. While it was originally slated for 2021, Sifu's release window has been moved to early 2022 according to the trailer released today. As with most release windows, it's pretty vague, though it likely won't be as massive of a shift as other recent games have been experienced. While nothing has been confirmed, early 2022 likely means the first quarter or so of the year, which would land somewhere between January to April, assuming it doesn't get pushed further. It's not all bad news though. The new trailer gave fans an excellent look at Cephas' gameplay and mechanics. Specifically, the trailer features a heavy emphasis on how the character ages, which happens each time they're defeated. It's not entirely clear how aging will affect the experience, though it's the first time players have seen it in action. It might change the abilities that players can use, but fans will have to wait to find out more. Sifu has been one of the smaller, darling projects of recent State of Play presentations, being heavily featured alongside even some of PlayStation's biggest titles. There's a fair bit of excitement around the project at this point, which is always a good sign when it comes to games of this scope. That excitement means Sifu's delay will sting a bit, though Slocklap does make some excellent points about why a delay is necessary. Video game industry crunch has been a problem for a long time, and sacrificing quality is never a good thing. The extra wait time is unfortunate, but it should also mean the wait was worth it. So far, Sifu looks pretty compelling, focusing on dynamic combat and the player's learning experience. Every time they die, they'll come back a little older and with more knowledge of how to approach the threat ahead of them. The end of a year is always a big time for games. AAA studios and indie studios alike are always tempted to compete for the holiday season market with major releases. Sifu might have been planning to do just that, but circumstances indicate that it might not have come out as the top dog at the end of 2021. Sifu already does a lot of interesting things on its own. Its combat looks fluid and satisfying, and the seed of a compelling story already lies in the protagonist's mysterious amulet, which allows him to revive from the dead at the cost of years of his life. Ultimately, if Sifu succeeds, it'll be at the merit of those qualities, rather than simply thanks to its release date. After being announced in June 2020, Super Brothers Jet the Far Shore was delayed last September. Its newest trailer debut during the July State of Play event does not confirm a release date more specific than 2021, but it offers interested players a lot of sweeping environmental shots to sink their teeth into. Fans of the popular anime Up next we had an update from the Yakuza spin-off series Judgment. Lost Judgment's newest trailer was shown during Sony's July 2021 State of Play, focusing on the upcoming game story, action, and gameplay. This trailer also demonstrates that Lost Judgment will have the Yakuza series' unique mix of serious storytelling, 
Lost Judgment is a sequel to Judgment, which itself was a spin-off of the Yakuza series that has developed a fan base and identity of its own while keeping the things fans love about the main series games. Rumors about a sequel to Judgment were confirmed in May 2021 when Lost Judgment's existence was leaked on the PlayStation Store. This new gameplay trailer comes just a few days after Sega revealed Lost Judgment's opening cinematic. This new trailer begins in a courtroom as a character informs the judge that a body has been discovered in Yokohama, setting up what could be the game's big mystery. Next, the main character, Takayuki Yagami, is seen discussing the case and being asked to investigate it. Viewers then get to see how the game plays with Takayuki jumping over gaps, climbing on drain pipes, and investigating a crime scene. The trailer then shows flashes of stealth and combat before, in a fashion typical for this franchise, quickly changing tone. The next portion of trailer Lost Judgment's trailer focuses on Takayuki Yagami and the side activities in which he can participate. In a brief montage, Takayuki shows off his creation Yakami bot, then he competes in a boxing match, DDR, and a street race. After showing off Takayuki's skateboarding skills, the trailer reveals what could potentially be a highlight of the trailer for many. Takayuki is shown walking a Shiba Inu down the street before getting into a battle where the dog fights alongside him. The trailer then proceeds to demonstrate Takayuki's fighting skills before shifting the tone to focus on the story again. Lost Judgment is shaping up to be a bigger game than the first entry, and it will be a chance for Sega to establish the series as something separate from Yakuza and more than just a spin-off. It seems that Sega intends to support Lost Judgment post-launch with DLC and a season pass. The idea of additional content beyond the already vast amount of activities revealed in this latest trailer is definitely exciting. However, we will have to wait and see what this possible DLC will be. Although Lost Judgment clearly owes a lot to the Yakuza franchise, its central premise also has a clear resemblance to Ace Attorney's gameplay. Both Yakuza and Ace Attorney are really doing well for themselves lately. 2020 saw the release of Yakuza Like a Dragon, which put a JRPG twist on the Yakuza universe and got positive reviews from fans and critics alike. As for Ace Attorney, Capcom recently revealed that the great Ace Attorney Chronicles, a compilation of two classic entries in the series, will release in the West soon. It seems fitting then, that 2021 will also see the release of a game that could appeal to fans of both Yakuza and Ace Attorney. Lost Judgment, the sequel to the well-liked Yakuza spin-off Judgment, releases worldwide in just a few months. After that we have another sneak peek on the Death Stranding director's cut and some important updates related to it. The new version of the game will launch on September 24th for PlayStation 5, with fans able to pre-order the remaster right now. As for what returning players can expect from the Death Stranding director's cut, it'll offer new content as well as a visual upgrade, with the early look promising additional missions, improved combat, and more. Much like the re-released Summer Game Fest trailer, the new look at the game specifically notes that it will be the definitive Death Stranding experience, being remastered for next-generation platforms. In terms of what's completely new, the trailer promises it will have additional battles and improved combat mechanics, specifically noting that the game's melee has been upgraded. New weapons have been added too, with the trailer showcasing the Mazer gun, which fires a bolt of electricity that stuns mules, and mounted machine guns, which seem to now be a fixture of mule camps. Players will even be able to test these extra weapons at a new firing range. New tools have also been added, including a cannon that shoots cargo, a support skeleton, a ramp to help jump large gaps, and a variant of the original game's delivery bots that can accompany the player. It seems Sam can even use the latter as a makeshift vehicle, hopping atop the torsoless robot to speed up travel. The director's cut will even introduce some new story missions, although little was revealed about how substantial a part they'll play in the narrative. According to the official PlayStation Store listing for the game, these missions will take players to an expanded area, allowing them to investigate new parts of the map. Some of these locations appear to be shown during the footage, with Sam navigating through abandoned buildings, rundown laboratories, and some sort of graveyard. It sounds similar to the Iki Island expansion attached to Ghost of Tsushima's director's cut, which will add a new location for players to explore. 
Finally, the game will be getting a racing mode, with players able to drive cars around the fragile circuit. It seems we'll be able to pick from a variety of tracks and vehicles, competing in time trials in an attempt to set a high score. It is a weird thing to do in a game like Death Stranding, but we will have to wait and see if the racing mode or levels is really demanding. The standard edition of Death Stranding, Director's Cut costs $49.99, whereas the Digital Deluxe Edition costs $59.99. Alongside the base game, the Deluxe Edition comes bundled with the content of the original Deluxe Edition. It also brings new in-game suit colors, new power glove colors, new BB pod options, backpack patches, a digital mini art book, the OST, and an avatar set. The PS4 owners of any version of Death Stranding can upgrade to Death Stranding, Director's Cut's Digital Deluxe Edition for $10. The PS4 disc owners of Death Stranding will have to insert the disc to download and play the upgraded version at all times. Thankfully, Death Stranding, Director's Cut will allow PS4 players to transfer their saved data and pick right up from where they left without having to start fresh. Death Stranding Director's Cut seems like a meaty package, with plenty of new additions to lure old fans and welcome new ones who missed out on the original. And finally they ended the state of play event with another look at Deathloop. Said look functions as an extended gameplay trailer that breaks down what's happening for its viewers. It does recap a few elements that the developers have already touched upon, but still provides some new details for fans to dig into. When it kicks off the new stuff, the gameplay walkthrough shows Colt, Deathloop's protagonist, Hunt the Visionary, Alexis Dorsey, otherwise known as the Wolf. In the trailer, Colt knows Alexis plans to give a speech during a masquerade, so he decides to use his current loop to learn Alexis' identity and assassinate him. As a result, alongside Deathloop's primarily run and gun playstyle, the walkthrough also shows off numerous ways players can stealthily tackle the game's missions. The trailer also reveals some mechanics that players can take advantage of during their runs. Specifically, the reprisal ability makes it so that players don't have to restart their loop when Colt dies. Instead, they can rewind to a checkpoint created just before the encounter they died in, but only up to two times in a row. Once they've revived, players can find Colt's body in the same spot he died in and absorb something called Residium from it. With enough Residium, players can take the weapons and abilities they've gained into new loops. Viewers also receive a little more information on the relationship between Colt and Juliana, the visionary who actively hunts him. A second player can take control of Juliana, but if not, an AI plays her. A distinctive alarm will sound whenever she appears and begins her hunt for Colt. Those controlling Colt should watch out for this alert because Juliana can kill them and force them to restart the loop. The interactions between her and Colt in this trailer support the idea that she and Colt shared a bond before the game's events, and whatever happened between them is what led to Colt's loop. Deathloop's release date happens on September 14th, so there's a little over two months before the game releases and reveals to fans what exactly is going on. At this point though, it does seem like Bethesda and Arcane have shown off everything we need to know about Deathloop's gameplay. While the two studios could decide to air one final trailer before the game launches, it is hard to imagine that it'll display anything new or devoid of spoilers. The Deathloop State of Play trailer ended with a graphic reminding everyone that it is a PlayStation 5 console exclusive game, and in the small print of that graphic, fans could see a note saying Deathloop will also be available on PC, and it won't be out on other consoles until September 14, 2022 at the earliest. After all, the state of play is a good one, even it's not big PlayStation showcase it was really a satisfying one. It showcased many indie titles and some cool gameplay and also some deep dives. I give it a 6 out of 10. PlayStation is consistent with amazing state of plays and they also conducting their big events. So, check out these games if you like any of them. Support the developers and stay tuned for the big PlayStation event coming in a few weeks. Moving forward we have an update for the PlayStation 5. Sony launched its PlayStation 5 hardware last year, and while PS5 supply shortages continue to be a pain, the console has otherwise been well received. PS5's added horsepower compared to the PS4 is no joke, and the console's SSD is definitely a game changer. 
Even so, there's always room for improvement, and like it did with the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 in the past, Sony has regularly released updates to continue tweaking the PS5 and its performance. A new firmware update is now available for PS5 users to download, clocking in at about 902 MB. PS5 Update 21.0103.21.00 doesn't seem to do much beyond improving system performance, but it will still be a required download for those who hope to use the PS5's online features. Luckily the update is fairly small, and so it shouldn't interrupt one's gaming time all that much. This PS5 update isn't all that flashy or exciting, but small updates like this are important to keep consoles up to snuff. And while this particular update won't exactly light the world on fire, Sony does have more substantial updates planned for future. Anyone interested in getting a sneak peek at those updates can sign up for the PS5 system software beta testing program, which will allow participants to provide feedback on new features before they're rolled out to the masses. One of the features that fans seem to want the most is the addition of UI themes. PlayStation 4 users are able to customize the backgrounds and sound effects of their consoles by applying a variety of themes that they've earned from games, promotions, or purchased through the PlayStation Store. Someone that has been gaming for a while on PS4 likely has quite a few background themes in their collection and may want to use them on the PlayStation 5. The PS5 user interface is quite a bit different than the PS4 UI, so that could be why themes still haven't made their way to Sony's next-generation console. However, one has to imagine that Sony does plan on adding custom themes at some point down the line, especially when one considers just how many themes were released for the PS4 over the years. That being said, nothing official has been announced at this time, so we should keep our expectations in check. There will be many more PS5 system updates in the months and years ahead, so even if fans have to wait a while for themes, there should be plenty of other new features to look forward to as well. One update some people asking for is the M2 SSD expansion. Mark Cerny confirmed that the SSD expansion will take time because they want to give the top-notch experience. The SSD upgrade does not benefit me because I am not buying an SSD for $500. I actually can get a 32TB hard drive because I don't play various games simultaneously. For narrative-driven games I will get into that universe for any game that applies. Unless I want to play some multiplayer, I want Switch to games randomly. I can simply get the games, store it on my hard drive and move it to the system whenever I want to play that, just keeping some of the games in the actual system. So, SSD expansion and quick resume is not for me, but for common the SSD expansion should be addressed when the time closes near. And that's all for the video guys, like and share the video for a greater audience. Comment your thoughts on the topics and if you want to contribute for the growth of the channel, the link to my PayPal in the video's description and in the channel banner. Donations are always appreciated, thanks for watching the video, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon, and until then from SMPV it's goodbye.